Hello there! This video is about 3D printed breathing masks. Seeing as how we're going through some hard times now battling a weird virus that's come around, I've started working on designing and building a breathing mask that could filter out virus and bacteria as well as other particulate matter uh, floating around in the air. In the process of doing so, I've actually learned a lot about how breathing masks are supposed to work, and the process involved in filtering out the contaminants that you do not want to breathe in. I wanted to make this video teaching you how I used what I learned to build this mask and in the, the process I went to, to design and build it, as well as a general warning regarding some 3D printed mask designs that are out there. Since this pandemic began, there have been a group of people that no doubt have really good intentions and have since designed breathing masks that can be 3D printed. Uh, the problem with them though is that they don't really work. Not only that, but they can be dangerous in a completely different way, by giving people a false sense of security. Now, to understand why that is the case, we've got to understand how 3D printers work and how breathing masks work. FFF or FDM 3D printers, your typical 3D printer, create objects by placing thin layers of material on top of one another. Now, this process is quite imperfect and can leave gaps within the material that can let air and other particles through. It may not really look like it to the naked eye, but the surface of this 3D print is actually full of tiny holes. Here are some photos I actually took with my microscope to illustrate the point better. The layers that make out a 3D print can have gaps between 6 and 8 microns thick. Viruses like the one going around right now are 200 times smaller, around 0.08 to 0.03 microns in diameter. Of course, this issue would be resolved if you'd have access to a powder-based or resin-based printer, with medical-grade materials, of course. But most people uh, that would be printing these masks don't really have access to such equipment. Another problem with the surface left by the 3D printer is that it is quite rough, and because it is printed with normal PLA or ABS, it is a great breeding ground for bacteria, and they're rather hard to clean and disinfect. Now, all of these problems can be overcome rather easily by changing the actual surface of the 3D print, like I did with this mask. This process is rather simple and I'll go about explaining the steps I took to make this happen and to show you how I built this mask. But before that, there's another issue I've got to discuss when uh, talking about breathing masks and the way they actually work. Masks like this 3M N95 mask that I've got here or this surgical grade mask work by having a layer of intertwined fabric that will stop particles growing through it. Like I mentioned previously, a virus can be really, really tiny, but here's the thing, uh, there needs to be a balance between breathability and filtration. It is impossible to make a filter that will catch 100% of particles because it will also not let enough air through it. These masks overcome this not by having really dense filters, but by having multiple layers of filtration. So, a particle attempting to enter the mask would be like an arrow being shot through a forest of trees. The arrow will travel a couple of meters, but it will eventually hit a tree on the way to the target. We can get our filtration material for our mask from an already existing surgical mask or an N95 mask. It is also possible to use a vacuum cleaner bag or a HEPA filter. In this case, I wouldn't really recommend it unless you really know what you're doing. HEPA filters on vacuum cleaner bags usually come with a rating written on them depending on the type of filter that and its intended purpose. 
it might not really provide enough filtration. Another very important thing when discussing the way breathing masks work that might actually be the most important thing about the way they work is the seal. There is a very important difference between surgical masks and N95 respirators like this one. And it is the fact that the N95 respirator will actually create an, an airtight seal around your face and nose while surgical masks fit rather loosely around your face. This is ultimately the thing that makes surgical masks not suitable in an environment where viral particles might be floating around in the air. There's nothing really stopping the air from entering your lungs through the gaps that the mask leaves around your face when it is loosely fitted. Uh, in comparison, an N95 mask has a much tighter seal around your face. It isn't perfect, but it is much better than your standard surgical mask. Of course, if you do not have an N95 mask available, uh, you should still wear the surgical mask. Now, in this category is where 3D printed masks actually fail pretty spectacularly at. There are a lot of examples I could cite here, and there is actually one in particular I'd like to discuss about, but I will leave that for the end of the video. I would like to first show you how I built this mask first. The way I got about solving this problem with this 3D printed mask was by testing multiple rubber materials that I could put around the edge of the mask to actually create an airtight seal. I ultimately settled on this rubber window padding tape that is used to prevent air from entering through tiny gaps in older windows that don't seal well enough. It works surprisingly well for this purpose and it might actually work to adapt other 3D printed masks as well. The first step is, of course, actually printing the model. The model will come out of the 3D printer rather rough and with an unequal surface. It doesn't really matter how good your 3D printer is. We're worried about micron level gaps in the surface that are actually impossible to avoid with standard FDM 3D printers. What we're going to do is actually change the surface of the print entirely by sanding it, filling it, and then painting it with acrylic paint. There's a great tutorial on how to do this by Jurasnip. I'll be linking his video in the description below and I will of course also show you my own process. Now, like I've mentioned before, in order to solve the issue, the print needs to be sanded. The best way of doing this is wet sanding under the tap water. If you sand plastic without water, you risk melting and deforming the plastic itself. You start out by using rough sandpaper and then moving down to higher grip sandpaper. There isn't an exact science behind this, you just need to sand until you feel the surface is really smooth. The next step is to add filler. Now, I would usually use spray filler for this, but I was unable to find any and I am now unable to exit my home and search for some. So instead, I decided to use universal filler paste, usually used for wood filling. I used the glove to do this, and I slowly rubbed the paste all over the gaps in the mask, pretty much covering the entire mask. It's okay though, because we will be sanding this filler down. Most of it will actually be gone once we finish. Once the filler has dried, we can start sanding the surface. It's basically the same process as when we first sanded the print, but this time around we won't be using any water. In this particular case, combining the filler with the water will actually make it pasty and unusable. This wouldn't really be an issue if you'd be using spray filler instead of the paste filler I used. After sanding, make sure to open up the gaps on either side of the mask that will actually allow us to mount the strap holders later. After sanding comes painting. I wasn't able to film the painting process, but it's pretty straightforward. 
I applied two even layers of plastic primer and then two layers of acrylic white paint that would dry out to form a hard shell around the printed part. Now, for an application like this one, I would actually recommend using acrylic lacquer as well. To add an extra layer to the part that can actually be easily cleaned and disinfected using isopropyl alcohol, chlorine or hydrogen peroxide. The next step would be to apply the rubber seal around the edge of the mask, but in order to do so we need to sand the edges first because filler and paint would have gotten to them and we need a clean surface to glue the rubber seal to. We now need to get the rubber window seal and cut it to length. Uh, you don't need to be too precise as we will be cutting it to the final length later. We can now start gluing the rubber seal around the mask. I will be using cyanoacrylate glue for this, but a non-toxic silicone might actually be more suitable for this purpose. I started at the bottom and I saw this to be the best position to leave the final gap that will need to be glued at the end. You need to go slowly and move around the edge of the mask, making sure to align the center of the rubber seal with the edge of the mask. Once you get to the nose section, things can get a bit tricky. You'll need to apply pressure while twisting the seal around and hold it in place. It might take a few tries. You can always practice without putting any glue in place first. Once you get to the end of the run, you can cut the seal to length. Make sure to cut it straight so that both ends meet against each other. You can then apply glue and press them against each other. You can apply more glue in the interior of the seal to make sure the seal is sturdy enough. In the 3D files, there will also be a bunch of pins and strap holders that you can print. The first step is to glue the pins in place in the gaps that are on either side of the mask. These pins will serve as guides for the strap holders. Next, make sure to test out the position of the strap holders and then apply a liberal amount of glue and glue them in place. Uh, the holder should be slightly angled upwards and downwards. Now we've pretty much finished the mask itself and we need to move on to assembling the filter. There are five main parts to the filter assembly. The main body screw, the cap, the ring, the filter itself and the rubber o-ring. In order for the filter to do its job, it must not allow particles to pass through any part of the assembly except the filter material. To achieve this, uh, there is a ring that presses against the filter material and it doesn't allow air to go through. The ring is pressed in place by screwing the cap. Plenty of space has been designed inside the main screw to put a filter grid inside, like the ones used in HMEF filters. The first step is to place the filter material over the main body and then place the ring on top of it. We're going to press the ring tightly against the filter material. After we're sure the seal is tight enough, we can go ahead and coat all the excess material. We then proceed to screwing the cap, making the ring press against the filter even tighter. Now, we could screw the filter into the mask, and if we intended to glue or silicone to seal it permanently on, that would be okay. But the point of the screwing filter is to actually make the mask reusable. After all, you can make more screwing filters easily, but making a mask isn't as easy. In order to preserve the capability of screwing in the filter without sacrificing the airtight seal around it, we need to add an o-ring before we can screw in the filter. A custom-made rubber o-ring would be perfect, but in my case I lack the materials to make it. So instead I decided to use a replacement material that works just as well. Funky foam. It is a rubberized foam material. So it shares many of the same properties. 
In order to cut the O-ring to the correct dimension, I modeled and printed this stamping tool. Now, something important to remember about O-rings is that they don't seal properly on their own. They require some kind of lubrication in order to produce a good seal. There exists a special vacuum seal on O-ring grease, but for our DIY purposes, standard silicone grease would also be able to maintain the seal. It just won't last as long. Now, with all that, we're done building the mask. Of course, there are a lot of improvements in the building process I did not show, like actually sealing, priming, painting the interior of the mask, as well as the filter caps themselves. I also didn't add lacquer to the exterior in order to be able to make this video on time. The filter area itself also seemed good when doing the math, but once I wore the mask, I noticed it's quite hard to breathe. It's fine if you're breathing in slowly, but it can cause trouble if you take deeper breaths. I will modify the design to have larger filters in version 2. It will hopefully be ready when I publish the video. The filtration capabilities of the mask depend on the filter material of your choice. I, of course, recommend using the same filter material that tested respirator masks are made out of. I tested this mask for pressure leaks around the edges, and the seal was able to maintain the pressure while the mask was on my face. So I'm confident this mask won't have the same issues that many other 3D printed masks have out there. Now, like I've mentioned before, 3D printed respirator masks uh, fail spectacularly when it comes to the seal around the mask. I think the most egregious example has to be the mask made by Copper 3D. I mean, look at the gaps between the nose. This mask has been marketed in many news articles, blogs and forums. If you're in the maker community, you've no doubt actually seen it around. They even claim they use patented technology and advanced R&D to make the mask with various partners. And of course, they claim that in order for the mask to work, you need to buy their special copper filament. In fact, the claims made by the makers of this particular mask prompted authorities from multiple ministries of health to actually send out notices of warning against the use of 3D printed masks. On screen, I will put one from Chile's Ministry of Health titled 3D printed masks, high risk of infection, false sense of security. They mention that even though people may have the right intentions trying to help people by printing these masks, they are putting people at risk, so be careful. So while I was in the process of gathering the footage and editing the video, I actually went to the Copper 3D uh, website and this is the announcement that now pops up if you try to visit the website about the mask. Uh, they actually even tell you that you should not use this mask and they're pretty much admitting that it is unsafe. Uh, they even say it isn't intended to be printed, sold and used by anyone. So they state they do not recommend using or printing it anymore. Even though the mask has been marketed and publicized everywhere as something you can print to help people out with the title Hack the Pandemic. Uh, yeah, it doesn't actually work and it's actually quite dangerous. I have designed this mask specifically to be safe and to be able to be used in an environment where air might have a viral or bacterial load. This is why I changed the surface of the 3D print. I placed material around the edges of the mask to create an airtight seal around the face and design screwing filters with o-rings that wouldn't let air into or out of the mask unless it passes through the filter first. Even though I'm confident this mask will offer more protection than your standard surgical mask, it should be used only as a last resort 
if you do not have access to mass manufacturer protection equipment like N94 masks. While 3D printing masks may help short term, it isn't really sustainable long term, especially keeping in mind the time consuming process of building one of these masks. Many people are printing these objects not actually knowing how to help or what to do with them. In the past week I designed a respirator mask meant to be used with a Venturi's valve designed by Philip Kolber. I received many messages asking me after they've already printed them asking me how to use them and what they are for. I know it is well intentioned but you should contact your local hospitals and ask them what they need first. Uh, one of the safest and most useful things you can 3D print and build are face shields. Even Prusa Research designed their own and made the files available online to download. I will actually put the link in the description below. Now with all that we've come to the end of the video. I hope you learned something and stay safe out there. Bye. The most important thing about the way they work is the seal. That joke was terrible.